Today I'm watching Angel Season 2, Episode 2. It's the start of a brand new season. I really enjoyed the first episode. I thought it was funny. There was some karaoke, which was hilarious to see Angel singing Mandy. Darla is back. She hasn't met Angel yet. He has no idea she's around. We did see a bit of Wolfram and Hart, but they haven't really interacted with Angel yet. So I'm very curious to see if they will continue to be the villains for this season as they were in Season 1. I'm terrified to see what this reunion between Darla and Angel is going to be. I hope we get some Buffy crossovers at some point as well. Those are usually the best episodes in my opinion, but also the most heartbreaking. But thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for TV shows you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. It's starting to coagulate. <laughs> No, that's cinnamon. She put cinnamon in it? Who's the client? There is no client. I'll check back with you later, see what you found out. Cryptic much? Angel, Why is he so curious about this hotel? You believe whatever made this place its home did so for some time? Probably right up to the end. Oh, I love a spooky hotel. Okay, very curious indeed. Is this based on an actual place? Comment below and let me know. Oh, going back in time. Yeah, and they said it was in Hollywood. I love like this style, like this 50s Hollywood, or the 20s, they said. We'd have to shut down, wouldn't we? Ever look into his eyes? There's nothing there. <laughs> Who's in room 217? Okay. It's instantly reminded me of like The Shining and even uh, American Horror Story did a season about a hotel as well. Hello, Bellman. Anybody home? He says with confidence. Angel! Oh, shoot. That's why you're so curious. Mm hmm. Interesting. I love any time we get to learn about Angel's backstory. Where would he find this? I'm guessing he's stealing from blood banks, maybe? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, suspicious man with the briefcase. I understand. Who's he talking to? Oh, gosh. You won't mind if I just come in and take a look around then. Angel, just no response. Just this blank face. Oh! Yeah, I guess I do mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's going down. Ha! Elevator jokes. Frankly, I haven't the slightest idea what to do with all this. We could make a collage. Oh, she's gonna see him in a photo. Look who is staying here in 52. Very much The Shining, yes. The New Year's Eve party. Oh, look who it is. This kind of music is like heaven to me. I love when we get to see these little pockets of history through Angel's life. And these whispers. Yes. Very creepy. Kind of guy. I don't like where this is going. This is gonna end badly. <laughs> Cheese and rice. Oh, I knew it was coming. It still scared me. He doesn't seem concerned. He's heard this before, perhaps? What about him? He's dead. We can't just leave him here. Of course not. We'll um, store him in the meat locker. Oh, God. For what? Dinner? Yikes. Yeah, now the manager's hearing the voices. Maybe this wasn't a suicide. Are you sure you're safe here? And we don't usually hear these voiceovers, so it's very interesting to hear what these other characters are thinking as well. I love this 50s time period, old Hollywood, so I'm very excited for this episode. I saw you over here. I hope you don't mind. I thought I'd say hello. 
He's giving very James Dean, Rebel Without a Cause, the jacket, the observatory. Last thing you see before you go. Maybe it was the wallpaper that drove him to it. Oh, God, that's horrible. But the crime he committed, the murder of the salesman and the storing of the body in the hotel meat locker, that... They framed him for the murder? You a heads up on account of what you did for me before, so... Thanks. She seems nervous. What's she hiding? You knew he wasn't my boyfriend. I had a hunch. Who's sending a private investigator? Oh. I think maybe they want this. And she stole the money. Yeah, I was going to say, is this going to be like Psycho? She took the money and ran. Why'd they fire you? Because I'm not what I say I am. Is she a vampire? My father, I didn't even know him. My blood isn't pure. It's oh my God, that's horrible. That's why they fired her? Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah, they've mentioned race a few times in this episode, like they refused that family. They said it would fall when they obviously had a room at the hotel. Something that's making people crazy. Very much like The Shining, yes. Yeah, I'm curious why Angel's now suddenly revisiting it, why he's going back here. Is he checking to see if that money's still in the basement? We don't really know how Angel gets his money. Oh, there it is! Oh my gosh. Paranoia demon. Whispers to its victims, feeds on their innate insecurities. Oh, that's definitely what's happening, yep. And that's a horrifying concept. Demonic suggestions, exorcisms, cleansing rituals. Try this one. Oh! That Bible burned him? Yeah, this guy's like, wait a minute. Bed roll down right here. So you bastards just can't walk in here uninvited. You got any idea who you're dealing with? Oh! Oh my gosh. But I'll do it. You pull any more of that Van Helsing Jr. crap with me. Are we clear? I haven't seen Van Helsing. In the back. Oh my gosh. That took a turn. Tell the studio. Expose perhaps your little peccadillos to the press. Don't you dare use alliteration with me. <laughs> the studio won't take your phone call, comrade. Pansy. Red. And what seems to be the trouble? Whoa, whoa. Big words were thrown around. And we're going to find out who. Like only murderers in the building, they're now becoming their own detectives. You'll go to prison. How long do you think someone like you will last in prison? That's so creepy because it's specific to each person. They know what each person is afraid of and they're just feeding them their worst nightmare over and over and over. Plantations there in the book, but you're gonna need an orb of Ramjurim. Now I got one I can let you have for cheap. For free. Good negotiation. I like how there's just a section for dogs. Vampire wanting to slay a demon in order to help some grubby humans? I just don't get it. That's the premise of our show, yes. Right! You once asked me where you could purchase a gun. That was for protection. And yeah, now they're just turning on each other. Everybody's suspicious. Yeah, I'm very curious if this is a real hotel. Comment below and let me know. Or if it's based on like a real haunted hotel. Oberamjurin. Oberamjurin, please, makes it happen. Uh, yeah, manners are free. No snapping, please. You be careful. Ancient conjuring orbs are notoriously fragile. <laughs> oh. We invoke thee by the power of all the priests of Ramjurin. Another glowing orb. Oh, my. That's cool. Oh, they're bringing forth. We know about you, Miss. Oh, no. registered under is a fake. We have proof. Who knows what else she's like? Oh, no, 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 no. This is spiraling. Come on. It was him. Look at his room. Go ahead. Look, he's got blood. He's a monster. Whoa. She just turned on her only friend. Oh. Oh, my God. Dang, girl. Wow, wow, wow. That was a... Did, did you just see the bussies she threw him under? Cheese and rice. What a dick move. This guy's nuts. 
he's not gonna die. They're gonna be in for a very disappointing hanging, because he's gonna just be there awkwardly for a while. Come on, girl, how can you do this? Poor angel. <laughs> Congratulations, you're all just murderers. Hope you're all really questioning your life choices yeah, right now. Swing, you freak. This guy. Yeah, that's right, you had that coming. <laughs> he is nuts. <laughs> He's just gonna open his eyes and wait for them to leave. Yeah, you just murdered a person in front of everybody. Straight up murder. What happened to innocent until proven guilty? Nope. Straight to the hanging. What do you call? He's like, I've made a big mistake. Now Angel's gonna have to find a new place to live. Yeah. He's like, this was inconvenient for me. Is he gonna see himself on the other side? What? Oh my, what's this? But I'm stuffed. God, I love people. This is the demon. Oh my god, tentacles! <laughs> what a beautiful, beautiful dance. It's a horrible, horrible thing to do. Oh my gosh. There's an entire hotel here just full of tortured souls who could really use your help. No, come on, don't team up with the demon. That's horrible. Take them all. <laughs> what? Angel. Oh my god. Is this how everybody in the hotel gets unalived? Whoa, 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 whoa. The kitchen's closed. Ah. Oh, zapped him. See you later. Oh my god. What did it mean especially that one? Oh, Wesley. It was still feeding all this time? Oh my gosh. I don't hear them anymore. Is she real? Is this a ghost? Are they gone? Or she just been hiding out in the hotel this whole time. Am I safe? Oh, this poor lady. You're safe. Can I go out now? Oh yeah, she's just been hiding this whole time. I'm so sorry I killed you. He's like, I was dead long before that. Don't worry about it. It's never been one of them. <laughs> Less people have been saying it behind my back. <laughs> Probably. Oh, poor Judy. She didn't make it. Sorry. 70 years of violence, mayhem, and paranoia. Bad vibes. We're moving in. I mean, if you think What? What? <laughs> Cordelia. Faces of humanity. This is a house of evil. Not anymore. This is going to be their new home base. They were looking for a place because obviously we saw what happened at the end of season one, but... Um, I love the decor. I'm very excited for to see a lot of scenes here. Especially paranoid. <laughs> now he's paranoid about being paranoid. So that was my first time watching Angel Season 2, Episode 2. I really enjoyed it. Both episodes of this season have been amazing. I know we're only two episodes in, but they've been so well done. And sometimes the start of a new season can be kind of hit or miss. I feel like they've done a great job with the past few episodes. I'm very excited to see where this season is going to go. Anytime we get to learn about Angel's backstory is my favorite. He has such a long history to pull from. And I love that they picked, you know, this specific time period. Of course, we've got old Hollywood and LA and just the history of this hotel as well. And I definitely wasn't expecting them to pick this as a place for their new, you know, home base to be. Obviously, they lost their office at the end of season one. So I'm very curious to see what this new building will do for them. I love the layout. I love the architecture. I think it's going to be a lot more spacious, obviously. But I was also a bit skeptical when they picked this place that had such a history with all these, you know, supernatural 
and violent things that Angel was obviously very familiar with, and a place that I think doesn't hold a great memory for Angel. Maybe now that he's come to terms with it and made a resolution, it'll be a little bit better, but he obviously had some horrible things happen to him in this place as well. We've seen Angel when he's in Ireland and Romania and other pieces, so it was great to add another layer, you know, another piece of the puzzle to Angel's backstory, him in this hotel. We didn't see anything about Wolfram and Hart. We didn't hear anything about Darla in this either. Obviously at this point in history, Darla and Angel would have gone their separate ways and we know Angel was living on the streets for a while as well. I don't know if they've ever said how old Angel is, but I think we almost found out in this episode where he, the guy at the bookshop Denver was saying like, oh, well you're almost 30 and Angel kind of took offense to that and was like, no, no I'm not. So he either is 30 and just doesn't want to admit it or he's younger than that. This episode definitely gave me the shining vibes. Obviously this hotel, people starting to lose their mind, hearing things, starting to act ways they don't usually act, becoming paranoid, you know, all these whispers they were hearing. And I believe the hotel room The Shining takes place in is on the second floor as well. Even the decor of the hotel having this green paint reminded me of, you know, the green bathroom scene in The Shining. Comment below and let me know, is this hotel a real place? Were they trying to bring some things in from real life into this story? I definitely feel like they were trying to emulate James Dean when we had that shot of, you know, Angel out by the observatory and wearing that red jacket that James Dean was famous for in Rebel Without a Cause. Uh, if you haven't seen that movie, definitely check it out. That's how I interpreted that scene anyway. It seems like there's too many pieces for it to just be a coincidence. I definitely feel like it was done intentionally. It was so cool to explore this time period, you know, the 50s, having this hotel built in the 20s, and then finding out that this lady had been living there this whole time was just heartbreaking. At first I thought, okay, she's a ghost, but obviously she reached out and touched Angel's face. And just so devastating to think that she's obviously felt guilty about the choice that she made and she thought Angel died all those years ago. Obviously the audience knows that he was already dead and she's just been hiding out because she keeps thinking the police are coming after her and this demon has just been feeding off of her fear and growing and growing and growing over how many years and just just her whole life basically, you know, spent trapped in this hotel room. And then even when she asked, you know, can I leave now? He's like, yeah, it's safe. You can come out. It was just heartbreaking. I was definitely getting a little teary eyed because I knew she wasn't going to get out. As soon as she's like, I just need to rest a little bit. I was like, you're going to lie down and not wake up. That's going to be the end of it for your character, basically. So that was definitely tough to watch. And to see Angel go back to this memory and he's already such a brooding character and then to revisit such a painful part of his past because he knows he sent everybody in that hotel to their demise. He knows he told the demon, yeah, go ahead, like feed off everybody. He didn't have any regard for human life at that point. Obviously, they had just treated him horribly. It was a mob mentality. They just hung him up and fully expected him to die because they didn't know, obviously, what he was. So they all committed murder and then is now kicked out of his home. Like he can't go back to the hotel, obviously. They all think he's dead. So now he has nowhere to live. This entire, you know, hotel turned against him. There had been some suspicions about, you know, him being kind of quiet and keeping to himself. So that alone was enough for them to turn on him. And obviously Judy, you know, pointing at him and saying like, that's him, he did it. And then everybody was like, oh, okay, you say this guy? Sure, no problem. And obviously she saw there was blood in his room, which didn't help the situation, but no conversation, no nothing. Literally 10 seconds later, he's hanging off the balcony because they don't even want to bother trying to resolve this. They're like, you did it, cool. And the guy committed suicide. We all saw it. We know that's what happened. And then the rumor mill started, this demon kicked in and everybody's paranoia just fueled further paranoia and fear and hate. And next thing you know, oh, it was a murder. Like just got so out of hand so quickly. Typically Angel is very compassionate towards his fellow man, but I feel like at that point, everybody in the hotel had crossed the line so far and had just treated him so badly that he had just lost complete disregard for their lives and was like, yep, yeah, whatever happens. Maybe he felt bad about it later. Rejected me. They murdered me. Like if he had been human, that would have been the end of it. Like that would have been horrible. Obviously it was horrible either way, but we know he gets to walk away from it. And to just see the expression on everybody's faces as they pan around the room and they're slowly realizing what's happened as Angel swinging there that, oh shit, we've killed somebody. And just that fact kind of smacking them in the face like, this is real, we did this, what are we gonna do? Like, this is horrible. And 
them all kind of bearing it deep down and they're like, okay, we'll keep the secret. We won't tell anybody. And now their problem solved. Obviously, we know more people died because the voice is still there. And to see that demon come out and him talking about how this is fueling him for years and years, the demon looked terrifying. Those tentacles that were coming out, it looked like he was like 12 feet tall just floating there in this like red cape so creepy the makeup prosthetics all of that stuff looked amazing so well done the show never disappoints with that stuff and it's been so creepy definitely would have scared me if i would have watched this when i was younger just his mannerisms and how he was so joyful and everybody else's pain was horrific and just the fact that he was this looming figure and he knew everybody's insecurities and even angels telling you know wesley and Cordelia don't listen to him don't listen to him and Wesley you know being Wesley was like I'm not paranoid am I tell me I'm not paranoid how paranoid am I and it's just you know asking over and over and over again and typically we know Angel to be a character who keeps very much to himself and the fact that he kind of got stuck helping this girl is the one who turned him in and he still goes out of his way to help her which is something he doesn't have to do and we know that's what he does now he's very dedicated to helping people but I feel like the version of Angel in this time period was keep your head down don't interact with people and he definitely wasn't looking for any trouble and unfortunately that's what happened I am very curious to see what they do with that giant bag of money that they found that had been left you know in the ceiling for however many years if they'll use that to kind of float the business as obviously this wasn't a paying job they still have to pay bills or if Angel will just get rid of it donate it I have no idea but it is interesting to think we don't really know how Angel gets his money other than from these clients but that's fairly recent how did he get money you know the entire time up until now there was themes of race throughout this episode as well. We had that family trying to check in at the beginning of the episode and, you know, the manager saying like, oh, the sign's broken. We actually don't have any rooms. And they're like, right, okay, the sign's broken, sure. And even when Judy's in the room trying to pretend she's a maid, you know, making the bed, Angel makes a comment saying that her skin tone is the wrong color and then we find out Judy is in fact biracial and that's why she was fired from her job, which is just horrible to think about. I'm sure it happened hundreds and hundreds of times, but it was just so heartbreaking to hear her say like, I had a good life, you know, I had this fiance, I had this job, I was happy. And then her horrible racist boss finds out that she has, you know, an African-American parent and lets her go. And it was just heartbreaking. She was just devastated. And even the fact she's like, I've never, you know, stolen anything before. Seemed like she lived, you know, a pretty straight laced life up until this point. And then at a moment of panic steals this money and is now trapped in this hotel feeling paranoid. And, you know, obviously that's a bad place to be with those feelings. A really good episode. It was just such a heartbreaking ending. I didn't know where it was going to go. We saw those newspaper clippings with Wesley and Cordelia saying that she just kind of disappeared. I was thinking maybe Angel was able to sneak her out of the city and she, you know, had a new identity and left town. I thought maybe she died or something like that and they covered it up. No idea, but I was not expecting to see her still sitting in that hotel room however many years later it was just such a gut punch and she definitely was real and she just dies as soon as she sees Angel I was like oh my heart just went right for the feels assuming she would have been in her 20s when she got to the hotel the rest of her life it sounds like she never left that room she could barely even stand up to get out of the chair because she's probably sitting in that chair for how many years like it was just so devastating to see what this demon had done and how much of her time had been wasted and I feel like Angel felt so guilty because he told the demon to go do these things he knew what was going to happen and he didn't try and stop it and when she asks him to forgive her yes she she shouldn't have accused him. Obviously, that was a horrible, horrible thing to do. And she's been living with the guilt of thinking that he died all these years. But Angel also feels guilty for just leaving her there. It was just such a heartbreaking moment. Overall, I really enjoyed this episode. First two episodes have been amazing. I'm so excited to continue watching this season. I definitely have a high bar set now for the rest of the season. I hope the next episode isn't just filler or anything like that. I feel like you could have done a whole TV show about Angel during his time at the hotel. There was such a cool set and all these characters. It definitely reminded me of the TV show American Horror Story, the season where they're at the hotel as well. Overall, a really great episode. I'm so excited to continue to watch this 
I hope there's some crossover episodes eventually. Um, please no spoilers, but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for TV shows you think I should watch, please comment below. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. She put cinnamon in it? Why is he so curious about this hotel? Ha! Ah, elevator jokes. Yeah, now the manager's hearing the voices. They framed him for the murder. Is he checking to see if that money's still in the basement? This is the demon. Oh my god, tentacles! It was still feeding all this time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now he's paranoid about being paranoid.